Stephanie, I started to write out um, my response to your response and discussion board. And I thought, you know, you, there's a lot covered here. So I thought it would just be a little bit easier um, for you to to be able to view. A, a, I'll, I'll address each of your questions in this video instead of writing things out. So make an educated goes I'll just say it's because of the readability and legibility factor. I'm sure there's more to it than that. So please explain. Um, yeah, okay. So I'm, I'm, I'm guessing that that is in response to why um, many professional di designers discourage use of stroke on typeface. Now, as we know, a stroke on a typeface is what? It's, it's, it, I'm, there's no stroke on this typeface, but I'm just using this as an example. It's a, an outline, okay? And the reason we don't, and the reason stroking typefaces is often indicative of amateur design um, or very inexperienced design, is when we stroke letter forms, the stroke has one of three choices, and the designer can make this choice. The stroke can sit on uh, the contour line. Uh, okay, so the outline of the letter, it can sit right in the middle of the contour line. So it's hanging half um, on the inside of the contour line, half on the outside. What this does is it changes the shape of the interior, the interior shape of the letter form, and it also affects the uh, counter space of the letter forms as they um, relate to their, their neighboring letters and the counter forms of those letters. If you place the stroke on the inside of the contour line, it decimates the interior space of um, the letter form. If you put it on the outside, it changes the shape of the letter form as well as the associated negative space surrounding that letter form. Okay, so if you are forced for some reason, like if let's say you have a client that says, I want an outline on that, Try to get away with the smallest possible stroke size as possible. Oftentimes, you see stroking letter forms on screen. Um, it's a little bit more acceptable than on print, but the principles are the same. All right, I do not recommend stroking um, letter forms ever. Um, it, a, a lot of a lot of designers think of stroking letter forms will improve read. Um, sorry, legibility or visibility. Uh, let's say, per, for, so for, you know what, for example, let's say you have a, a textured image, or an image that's got a lot of, uh, let's say, leaves and trees in the background, and you try to play place type right on that. Um, a lot of designers, or a lot of inexperienced designers think placing a stroke in that will increase legibility. It might help a little bit, but a superior technique in that regard would be to take the type, duplicate it, change the color, place it behind and offset it a little bit. And that creates more of a dimensional um, effect than, than a stroke, and it's a superior um, technique. Okay, um, other ways of increasing physical everything you've been running through the weeks besides which is terrific, it's much more than personality and message of your audience, consider the size and mixing bold and light lettering. Yep, yep, you got it. Make sure you have the design layout so you can utilize the grid and use guidelines. Keep my hierarchy, spacing, tracking, current, yeah, everything, everything from, from day one. And I get a lot of emails at this time of the um, term. And the emails, e emails typically ask, you know, what, um, how do you remember all of this stuff? And the answer is really simple. It's just, it, it, it really is muscle memory. Um, I mean, I still, I, I, I've been a practicing designer for a, a, a couple of decades now, over almost 25 years. And I still read at least one article every day, one typography article. I, I have been since I graduated. One of my instructors when I was in design school said, you know, hey, get in the habit of reading at least one, um, at least one uh, a typ typography article a day. And here I am several years years later, and I'm still doing the same thing. So uh, it's it's muscle memory. That's it's that simple. Okay, center line tends to tire your audience and reader. It makes it reading harder or slower because the starting point is different than the next discursion, but you got it exactly. It creates eye fatigue, and that's what we're against. We, we, if, if, if our viewers' eyes get tired, they're gonna stop, and our job as a designer is not successful. Never get thoughts of the negative space being asymmetrical or symmetrical, at least not conscious level. I just wanted to felt right, so I did some brief research, asymmetrical, just giving an asymmetrical layout. Bringing attention to the focal element. Okay, let me let me describe it like this: is in terms of typography, um, in terms of typography, in, in terms of of general um, aesthetics, we know that um, symmetry is not as interesting as asymmetry in visual communications. We know that that's a that's a proven fact, right? 
So what we can do is we can kind of follow this along with our presentation of type. Now, imagine this. I, I don't have any examples up, but um, you know what? Let me. You know, I, I don't need to begin some examples. I, I, I think we need a visual guide for this. But you can imagine this. Okay, so center alignment does this. Now, everything that you have have, have described over here, what it does is it creates symmetry. Okay, so center alignment, as you can imagine, each line is centered. So the symmetry, the negative space around the rags on the left and the right are symmetrical. They have to be because it's centered, right? This is why I'm so against center alignment or center line typography as a designer, because what it does is it creates symmetry in the surrounding negative space, and that symmetry is not interesting as as, as it's not interesting at all to me, but it's certainly not able, to, you're not able to use type, um, use negative space as a design element as opposed to just leftover space when, that's what you get when you center a line. You, you don't have any control over the negative space. You're just saying, okay, here's everything, it's centered. What is left over is left over. Personally, I like to take that space and use it as a design element. You see what I'm saying? So let's say, um, for instance, negative space, we have, um, just a phrase, I'm so lonely. All right, how do we use negative space, I'm so lonely? Imagine a composition with the term, I'm so lonely, that's just centered right in the middle of the composition. I'm so lonely. Okay, what is that saying? I don't know, I suppose you could mess with scale a little bit, but let's now take that same, I'm so lonely, and instead of in the center of the composition, let's take it way down at the bottom in the corner and put it really tiny down there. I'm so lonely, surrounded by this huge negative space. Now we're using negative space as a design element as opposed it's it's reinforcing the message as opposed to leftover space right and that's the, the critical um that's that, that's a key factor right there and that's something to keep in mind okay uh okay uh but yeah it looks like you got some good um uh, research done on uh asymmetrical uh layout in general and that's fantastic so again um, Stephanie, really great job. And I just wanted to address these these questions. You, you, you really got in depth here, and that's fantastic. I love it. You're, you're super, such an engaged student. Um, I just love it. Thank you. Please keep up the, let's finish strong, Stephanie. Stephanie, keep it up. All right, fantastic. Any questions at all, or if you want to respond to this response, just let, let me know, or, or have at it, because go ahead and respond. But if you have any questions at all, let me know. All right, fantastic. Thank you, Stephanie.